Thank you very much, Lorraine. <coughs> it's great to be here this evening. Um, I once wrote to Brendan Corish, who was then the leader of the Labour Party, looking for a signed copy of Labour's election manifesto. That was in 1971. I was 12. It arrived shortly afterwards, and I still have it. Sad, maybe, but true. This is it here. It was my father, and it was from my father, that I got my Labour values, the ideals and the principles that shaped my life, my perspective on the world, my sense of what was right, and my sense of my politics. Like his father before him, before him, my dad was a railway worker, a trade unionist, and a labour man. But just a word about who I am, first of all, and how I got here. I suppose like many of um, my generation, I was the first in my family to go to university. It was an opportunity that I grasped with huge enthusiasm and a, a sense of, I suppose, great promise about the future. I studied in uh, TCD, I became a student activist, a campaigner, a bit of a thorn in the side of the establishment. In those years we campaigned not just on student issues, but also for contraceptive rights, for civil rights, community action, and democratic rights in Eastern Europe. Later I spent 10 years as a producer in RTE and became, while I was there, quickly immersed in trade union activity, the old Federated Workers' Union of Ireland, and then I was very much involved in the early period of SIP2. After RTE, I worked for almost 20 years as an employment lawyer. I joined this party in 1998 in Dublin South. I've been a public representative for 10 years, elected to Dáil Éireann for the first time in 2011. As a junior minister in the Department of Health, I negotiated and delivered on Labour's commitment to legislate for the X case. I secured government agreement on our alcohol strategy, the first time in this country, the first time in this country that alcohol misuse is being addressed in public health legislation. Just this morning, in the Dáil, we completed the committee stage of the free GP care bill, the under sixes legislation. This is the first step in delivering universal primary care. And I am honored to be the minister responsible for this. So it's a really great pleasure to be here in Cork this evening for these hustings. It's a city and a county that has contributed a huge amount to the Labour Party and to the Labour movement over the decades. I'm thinking of people like Gerry O'Sullivan, Toddy O'Sullivan, and Joe Sherlock, all of whom served in government in one uh, capacity or another. I'm thinking of Michael Pat Murphy, Paddy Kerrigan, and of course the Desmond family through the generations. At least 14 members of our party have been Lord Mayor of this city in our uh, 100 years of existence. We're right to be proud of our record and of our history. But however great our history, however inspiring it may be to younger members, the past cannot guarantee us a future. The fact that we've been around for 100 years does not in itself guarantee that we'll still be around in another 100 years or even in 20 years. We suffered a bruising defeat a few weeks ago. We lost many good comrades, some of them here in Cork. Since then, I've heard it said more than once that while we've been here before, most recently in 1985, and that within a few years, we were back on track. And there's some truth in this. We are resilient. We have been in tight corners before, and we have pulled through, but, and this is my message here this evening. The recovery of this party is not guaranteed. There is no certainty that the pendulum of history will swing back in our direction. There's no certainty 
that this party will survive as a major political force into the future unless we act to make this happen. We can't just assume that the voters who deserted us in such numbers on the 23rd of May will come back sooner or later. The stark truth is that they will only come back if we respond to the message they sent us on that day in May. And that message was stark, very stark. Quite simply, they told us, change or move off the stage. And we need to change. We need to change our message. We need to change the way we do things. We need to change the image we present to the electors. That process of change will take time. It will not happen overnight. We have the opportunity, though, to start that process of change when we elect a new leader uh, on the 4th of July. In simple terms, and I know we can't really simplify complex things like this, but our message to the electorate over the last while has been this. The country was broke in 2011. We couldn't borrow money. We had no choice but to raise taxes and cut spending. We faced up to economic re uh, reality, unlike Sinn Féin and the extreme left. And we did it in a fairer way than either Fine Gael or Fianna Fáil did or ever would do. That's what we've been saying. In essence, what we're saying is things have been a lot worse if Labour were not in government. And I do believe we did a job, a necessary job in government. But having said that, colleagues, simple, clear and true as this message may be, it cut little ice with the electorate on the 23rd of May. And there's no real reason to believe that it will fare any better in 18 months' time. We need to change the message. When we go to the electorate in two years' time, it will not be enough for us to point to our record and ask them to imagine how much worse things might have been. We will need to tell them that the lost decade is over. We will need to present them with a vision of the future that is relevant to them and their families. We will need to offer them policies on health, on pensions, on taxes, on social change. Policies that will make life better for them and for their children. It needs to be a positive, forward-looking message that speaks to the lives of the people we look to represent. We can't just rely on a core vote, a record in government, our constituency work. None of those things on their own is going to get us over the line. Getting that message right will be my main task over the next year. And make no mistake, that will entail a shift in priorities, in priorities within this party. We need to strike a balance between doing our best in government and developing the party for the future. We need to do a huge amount to reinvigorate our organisation and to help the members of the party to work better together, to use information technology to better effect. But for any of this to be effective, we still need to get the message, if you like, the mission of this party. We need to get that right. Fourteen men and women, members of our party, served as ministers or ministers of state when Labour and Democratic left were last in government in 1997. Of these, eight have since left the Doyle. One of those eight is now President of Ireland. Another, Toddy, is with us here this evening. Of the remaining six, three have since been party leader. One, Emmett, last expressed an interest in being party leader a quarter of a century ago. And one, Brendan, decided not to seek the leadership a few weeks ago. The last man standing, I mean, or rather, the last woman standing, our current deputy leader, is the person I have the honour of sharing the stage with in these election hustings this evening. Sooner or later, we will have to look outside of that class of 97. There will simply be nobody left. So the question for all of us in this election is whether to return for one last time to that generation, to that group, outstanding and excellent as they have all been in and out of office, or whether we should move on now. In 10 years' time, this party will be led by a new generation of men and women, people in their 40s or perhaps even younger. We can start the transition now, or we can wait a few more years. The timing of that transition is critical. We've seen how our sister parties have suffered badly uh, in other countries by delaying change for a few years too many. We cannot afford the same mistake. I believe that the change we need must start now. I want to lead that change, to be 
a bridge to the new generation in this party. And for that reason, I am asking for your support on the 4th of July to make that happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. And I ask, uh...